Britain has a wealth of wildlife, many of which inhabit our waterways, but one that's always fascinated me is fish. In particular, freshwater fish, but they often take a back seat with our other wildlife, and I aim to rectify this. My name is Jack Perks, and I'm a natural history photographer and cameraman obsessed with fish. For the past year, I've traveled across Britain, filming the huge array of species that live in our rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds, successfully filming over 40 species breeding, feeding, and even fighting. But now I'm gonna be taking you on a journey from the Scottish locks to the Midlands canals to discover species rarely seen and tackle some of the issues our fish face beneath the waterline. Currently in the UK, we have 54 species of freshwater fish in our waterways, but few are more mysterious than the eel, which travels to the Saragasso Sea to spawn and then takes a three-year journey back to European rivers. I went to the River Severn in Gloucestershire to talk to Andrew Kerr of the Sustainable Eel Group about their future. The eel is, is really not understood. Um, most scientists believe that the, the biggest issues are in the oceans. Uh, the currents, they come and they go, the temperature changes, the food, the amount of food. We don't really know what the European eel eats in the Atlantic Ocean. Once they reach the continental shelf uh, and the rivers of, of Europe, um, we then have the major issue of barriers. That's the fish trying to get past uh, the flood defences and into the rivers, the brooks, the wetlands the other side so that they can grow up into bigger eels. Um, and then, of course, they have the return journey when they have to come back down the river system. And uh, there are tens of thousands of water pumps and 25,000 hydro power stations, all of which mince these big eels up. At this stage in their life, they are incredibly precious. A big female is probably carrying two million eggs. So she represents two million tiny little fish. And then another major, major issue is the loss of wetland habitat that's gone on for centuries and centuries. And we've lost 80% of our wetlands in the last 200 years. So the amount of habitat that the eel actually has to occupy is greatly diminished. We've seen a, a decline in the adult population to about 25, 30% of its historic average. Um, but the real crisis has come with the babies, the young ones, the elvers, as we call them here on the Severn. Um, we've seen a, a 30 or 40 year period of decline uh, but since then we've had five years of improvement. Now again this year we've had so many that the fishermen and the collectors are saying it's the best year since the early 80s. But if we leave them the wrong side of these sort of impenetrable barriers, then they'll just be eaten by zanders um, and all the other fish, the pike, the otters, and they won't do anything for rebuilding the population. Just the other side of here, we've got a nature reserve um, created by the Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust that stretches on this side and the other side of the Severn to well over a thousand hectares. Those nature reserves need a good population of eel, elvers, to turn into big eels. And that sort of barrier is stopping this happen. It's not only happening here, it's happening all the way up the Severn. It's happening all the way across Europe. And as I frequently say, it's like Hitler's Atlantic Wall if you're an eel. You can't get through it. Helping the eels to get over these barriers is one of the main ways to increase survival rates, along with habitat management. This can be achieved with an eel pass. The eel pass is put around a weir or other obstruction and allows the eels to wriggle through safely further upstream. Andrew is part of an organisation who are tackling this problem and I asked him to tell me a little bit more about what they do. SEG is a, is a coming together of scientists, conservationists like myself, and the progressives from the industry. Um, we've come together and united around an agenda for sustainability. Um, the scientists to do more scientific research work, to understand the mysteries of the eel. The conservationists to do important things like this, unblock the migratory pathways. Um, and then the industry itself um, is adopting sustainable practices um, so that 
fewer fish are wasted and as many as possible are, are caught in sensitive ways and then moved for restocking. Here, here on the Severn, for example, last year, 20 million fish were caught and 15 million were moved and restocked to other places in Britain or in Europe where they don't have an Elva run like the one we get on the Severn. Um, and yes, if, if we can use those, those precious eels intelligently and get them to grow on in, in their wetland habitats, yes, we can see a recovery. But nobody's talking of a recovery yet. Mm. And we certainly won't get it if we don't use them more preciously and more sensitively. So we're waiting for nightfall now for the elvers to run. So in the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy a pint of cider with Andrew and wait for nightfall. Cheers. To the elvers. To the elvers. With the tide coming, it brought the elvers up river. The elver fishermen set their nets in hope of catching some of the baby eels. Although they do take some to be sold, they donate a large proportion of their catch to be restocked into lakes and rivers all over the UK, which would otherwise perish in the Severn. It's an example of a sustainable way of fishing, but also helping their intended quarry. As the night went on, we did indeed catch many elvers into the thousands, though by the River Severn standards, it was still a poor night elvering. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.